work, girl. I don't know what is happening here. If I can give it more than five stars, I would have. I am so disappointed. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest queen in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race France, season three, episode two, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had the fab and drab of the week. This week, the runway theme is Living Couture, where the nine remaining queens must give us a look that is literally moving. That is right, we've got some robotics in the house. But before we get started, we had the queens from season two come back to watch the challenge, which was a talent show. Now I will not be looking at the talent shows themselves because we got already too many looks to get into today, but we do have to talk about the looks of the season two queens because girl, there is some good in here. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up is the queens from season two and their theme is legendary basically whatever you want first up we have rose and girl i am glad they are doing this in the order they got eliminated because i actually forgot about rose she got eliminated so early and honestly it's been a year and there's been so many seasons of drag race in between but rose is coming out with this black power suit jacket that is also a dress it's got a pink lapel with pink gloves and she's got matching hair first First up, I love the color coordination throughout the look. It really feels like a put together unit. It really feels like she put some thought into it. As well as it, with her name being Rose, I love that she went with a little touch of pink to kind of give you some branding. All in all, we are off to a very strong start and she is gonna be a bum. Next up, it's Vespi, and Vespi is one of those queens who I thought got eliminated way too early, but she's coming out with this blonde hair, this black dress, and this jewelry, and as she turns the corner, I'm not really loving it. I found that this looked really basic and really like girl going to the mall, or maybe she's going to a gala, but like she's not wearing the expensive stuff, you know what I mean? But as she continues to walk down the runway, we find out that this is actually a reveal because she rips it off and she gets into this gold dress with this draping fabric. And honestly, this second look is so much better. She definitely gives me a little bit of that like golden globe statue. And I always say that when you do a reveal, it can be tricky because I have two looks to judge you on. And personally, I love when the second look is better than the first, and that is exactly what she did here. She leveled up herself. All in all, I love this idea. I love that even though it wasn't a runway or a theme, she decided to make it a moment and make herself stand out. All in all, great job, a great return, and definitely gonna be a bum. Next up, we have Kitty Space, and Kitty Space is yet another queen that I felt got kicked out way too early. Since watching her on the show, I do follow her online, and girl, she is such a fashion queen. So I was expecting big things from her now that she is coming back, and girl, she delivered. She is coming out in this baby blue and silver outfit that is rhinestoned to the gods. She's got this giant silver headpiece, which she rips off to reveal this giant hairpiece to really complete the look. It's giving you space vibes, but like really elegant space vibes, but it's also giving you a little bit of that Renaissance vibe. It's also giving you a little cowgirl vibes. It's giving me all of the vibes and I'm loving it. This is a queen that I really hope comes back for an all-stars or a versus the world season because honestly, she deserves it. All in all, this is freaking amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Ginger Bitch. And Ginger Bitch is coming out in this black, yellow, and white chaps with this top definitely reminiscent of Christina Aguilera's dirty video. She is channeling Miss X Tina. Now, 
As soon as she came out, I was like, yes, I love it because I love a good reference moment. And this was clearly well made. The problem I have with it is as a returning look, I was expecting something a little bit more. I say that because this is referential, but a lot of queens could have done this look and it doesn't necessarily feel specifically ginger bitch. The other thing that I have with Ginger specifically is that she never really wears Ginger hair or not that often. In her promo picture, it was blonde. In here, it was blonde again. I wish she would lean into her name a little bit more. For this look, even though she went with Christina Aguilera, she didn't go with the Christina Aguilera hair and I love the Christina Aguilera hair. So I feel like that was a little bit of a miss. I also wish that had she done this look, she would have personalized it a little bit. When she walks down the runway, she turns around and it says dirty on the back, but wouldn't it have been so much better if it just said like bitch on the back, you know, just to put in her own personality. Despite all my critiques, this is still a really good look and it is still gonna get a bum. Next up, we have Moon, and my god, did Moon get a glow up. She went full on with this one. She's coming out with this, like, auburn orange hair that is so sculpted with this weird pale face makeup that is giving you a little bit of alien a little bit of creature she then paired it with this white dress and gold armor she is definitely giving me like moon of the gods or tarot card i actually don't know what she's channeling but whatever she's channeling is so good and i actually want to know if you know what her reference point is or who this character is, or even if it is a character, please let me know in the comments below, because girl, this is a next level. I am just stunned, honestly, and my mouth was on the floor. This is beyond amazing. If I can give it more than five stars, I would have. I literally have no words except to say fab, 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 fab. Next up, we have Cookie Cunty, which is coming out in this white lingerie with this corseted body and these big boobs. She's paired it with a blue hair and little ears and a giant feather off the top. Now, again, I feel that this is a reference I don't know. It's definitely giving like gamer girl vibes, like something is coming out of Harajuku, and I love this look. The thing that also surprised me is that this is coming from Cookie. I was not expecting this vibe at all. I was expecting her to go in a completely different direction. But this looks very fresh and modern. The thing is, is that I do like Cookie's classic edge that she was bringing on her previous season. So I was kind of expecting to see that. That being said, I can't really fault the look. It is just not the same sculptural level I'm used to with her. And honestly, some of these returning queens are really bringing it. All in all, it is still good enough to get a bow. Next up, we have the bearded queen from season two, Peach. She's coming out as a bearded Voldemort. That is right, she's got the full prosthetics on, but just leaving her signature beard to let you know who she is. She's coming out with the robe and the wand. As she rocks down the runway, she rips open the robe and gives you slithering green dress. That is right, she is Voldemort, but in a drag. And I'm like, work girl i love this first of all harry potter reference you got me then to take harry potter and make it drag if she had come out as just a regular voldemort i would have said okay it feels a little bit costumey but because then she comes out and reveals to this beautiful dress that hugs her body gives you feminine she's taking harry potter and bringing drag into it it definitely got all the references of harry potter without being a direct copy of harry potter she's putting this gender bender nuance into it. All in all, this is genius and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Mami Wata. Now, I did not review Drag Race Friends season two, but when I was watching the show, I always said that Mami Wata had so, so much potential, but some of her looks were really lacking, so I knew she wasn't really gonna win. But now she's coming back a year later with a fully conceptual look. She's walking out, and the first thing you see is her face, which is wrapped with her hair. It's definitely giving me a little bit of those African vibes. As you pan down to her dress, you see that it is huge. You see feathers coming all off of it 
and the feathers are all gradient in. Then she's got this beautiful blue ensemble to complete the look. This definitely feels like she's coming to say, I want to be on All Stars. Look at the glow up. Look what I can do. And a glow up she has had. All in all, this is amazing and 100% going to be a fab. Next up, we have Punani, and she's coming out wearing this sort of like green and pink deconstructed ruffle number. She's paired it with fishnet stockings and this rhinestone encrusted mask. I will say that having come from such amazing looks with really big concepts, seeing this in comparison was a little bit like oh, we're going backwards. But that's only just because the other people were so, so amazing. But once you actually start to look at this look, it's also really good. It has all these ruffle details, but with this sort of like punk edge, it's giving me a little bit of those Vivian Westwood vibes, which I'm not mad at at all. And it's definitely feeling cohesive and expensive. Also, although not as big or as conceptual as some of the other queens went, it is still a really good look and definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, we have Sarah Forever. And Sarah Forever is coming out with this sort of like white corset and showing a lot of skin that is all painted white. She's got this a white feathered back piece with this crazy hair that is all pointed and feathers all over it. It's definitely reminiscent of something that come out of Lady Gaga's Monster Ball, but made more creature-esque with this sort of like wolf hair. The other part that I really appreciate is the sort of mix of materials. There's some translucent, there's some feathers, there's some pleated. I think that once you're working with one color, using different materials really helps elevate the whole look. All in all, I think this is really, really well done. She's coming back with a vengeance and she wants to prove that she should have won the crown. All in all, this is amazing and definitely gonna be a bob. And finally, we have the winner of season two, Miss Kiona. And Miss Kiona is coming out with this silver latex dress and girl, I am so disappointed. Every queen was trying to outdo every queen and Keona as the winner, as a returning look, comes out with a silver basic body dress. And I'm like, huh? What happened here? This is not at all what I was expecting. Yes, it's maybe made of an interesting material, but it is not at the same level as everybody else. And she is the winner. Far too safe, far too plain, far to basic. I personally think that she was like, I'm the winner, I have nothing to prove, so I'm gonna come out with this basic dress. That is the only logical explanation I have to why she came out with this look. All in all, it is definitely not good enough and gonna be a drab. <laughs> Now that we got the season two queens out of the way, let's get into this week's episode. Let's start looking at season three. The runway theme is Living Couture, and first up, we have Misty Phoenix. Misty Phoenix is coming out as a snowflake. She is walking down the runway in this a white and gold attire. As she walks, the little plates in the middle of her start to spin, and also the little branches on the ends of her snowflake-inspired outfit start to flutter. It is definitely Definitely giving me snowflake but it's also giving me like star on top of the Christmas tree and I don't mean that in a bad way I actually mean that in a very gorgeous way because it's got all of this gold detailing and all of this white it's also giving me a little bit of like that Fabergé egg a little bit of Rococo it's definitely giving me elegant and superbly made when a runway starts with this look I am so curious what's gonna happen this is amazing and definitely gonna be a Bye. Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out in this sort of like Bordeaux capelet uh, that is all covered up. She's paired it with this hair, with this little headband that is giving you 20s a sort of a vibe. And she said that she is going for rich lady in the 20s. And as soon as she walks out and says that, I'm like, I understood. The hair, the makeup, it all works. As she walks down the runway, we find out that these are actually sort of like wing things and they reveal up 
and you see the outfit underneath. Now, I love the mechanics of this thing revealing. I feel it uh, very dramatic and very cool. The only thing that I have a problem with is I don't know what this has to do together. She goes on to explain that this is a lady who got stuck in an attic that turned into a moth. Honestly, this feels like a try hard sort of storytelling like she wanted to use this mechanism and made it fit into the theme and that's sort of the problem. I love this mechanism, but it is not integrated into the theme. She probably should have just went with this bug vibe as opposed to this whole story. But once you start to look at the outfit in itself, I love the little piece underneath. It really works with the hair. It's got all the rhinestone detailings everywhere so that it kind of really elevates the whole look. If I was to do this theme as the way it was, even though I probably wouldn't, I would have done a different fabric on the inside of the wing. So it would have revealed to maybe a bigger moment as opposed to it all matching. With all of that said, I am still think that this is a pretty good outfit and it's definitely still worth a buy. Next up is Le Philippe. And Le Philippe is coming out in this sort of like teal colored uh, bodysuit with these a uh, silver cone bra these uh, big hips and this tall hair as she lifts her arms you realize her that her arm is actually a whisk and she is whisking uh, some uh, food now from a technology point of view from a mechanics point of view this is really basic but what i love about this is that she decided to take this basic idea and really put a story around it the whole look is giving me futuristic but done from an old school sort of way it's like the jetsons met hooker met a uh, housewife and as she goes down the runway she uses the whisk to whisk her bowl and get it all over herself and she's really selling this story which helps the outfit a lot i think that this is a smart way to integrate technology when you are not a queen or person that maybe has those skill sets or knows those people that can do something extravagant this was just like that little touch you needed to meet the task and do it well. She really focused herself on the energy and the story and it worked. All in all, I love this idea. I think it is very original, very conceptual, very cool, and definitely gonna be yay. Oh. Next up, we have a Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is walking out with this a green dress with these sort of petals at the top, and I immediately know that she is a closed flower. As she walks down the runway, her flower blossoms and opens to reveal all of these like florals on the inside. She's then paired it with this classic hair and is giving you a full look. And this week again, she is showing her hairy chest. So on episode one, I was critiquing her about like why the hairy chest, it didn't make sense with the look. But now that she is doing it again, I've come to conclusion that this is probably her signature style. And this is where she is probably gonna maintain it and she is never gonna shave it. And therefore I like it even better because then it's a point of view and it's done on purpose. It is part of her brand. I love this idea of a flower closed and a flower open. It puts meaning into the mechanics and it's just, not mechanics for the sake of mechanics. The only thing that was sort of bothering me was that when she was coming out at first as the closed flower, it felt a little dull. It just was missing something. I wish she would have rhinestoned the back of the flowers or then the bottom in a sequence fabric just to give you a little bit of that zhuzh because this outfit only looks really good once opened. Regardless of that, I think it is still pretty good and still gonna get a bow. Next up, we have Perseo, and Perseo is coming out in this uh, green sequence uh, dress with these uh, giant claws, her giant boots, and this giant headpiece. Now, the one thing I will say about Perseo is she is consistent. She's definitely giving you the same, same style of drag each time, but redoing it in her own way. This time she's coming out with giant claws, but the part that I don't like about these giant claws is that you automatically see the mechanism that is built into them and they start blowing out bubbles. Now, I wish had she done that same mechanism, if she just spray painted it green, it would have definitely hit it a little bit better. But then as you start panning through the outfit, you also notice that around her crotch area, she's got three boobs. And then it got me really confused. 
I don't get this outfit. I like it because it seems well made and it is rhinestoned to the gods, but I don't like it because I just don't understand. What do the claws have to do with the boobs, have to do with the headpiece? It really feels like a mishmash of things together. On top of it, Perseo doesn't really wear that much clothes, so the clothes that she is wearing have to be that much more elevated, and I don't know that this one is. It really feels like something I've seen from her. So I think that she's gonna struggle on some of the next weeks if these are the types of looks she's been bringing because they're all kind of the same. So the question is, is it a fab or is it a drab? And honestly, I don't know. Based on the fact that I am not inspired and that I don't understand it, I'm gonna go with a soft drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Magnetica, and Magnetica is coming out with this uh, black and white look. She's got all of these different pieces coming off of her in all of these different patterns. Some plaid, some polka dots, some stripes. It is definitely giving you a little bit of that clown, a little bit of that mime, a little bit of that Italian carnival. She's got this uh, black face. As she turns around, her back starts to spiral, and she's hypnizing you. She comes back with a fully colored face and I love it. First of all, I thought the black face was strong. I didn't even realize that it was a mask at first. I thought she painted her whole face black and I was like, ooh, that is a choice. But it was already quite strong because it was so dark, your attention really went there. But then she reveals to this mask and shows you color and that works as well because everything is so black and white and her face is so color that again, even though it's got so much going on, her face is still the focal point. I also love Mag Magnetica's style. This is so intricate, so over the top, but also somehow is not wearing her. Sometimes people do over the top and the outfit is wearing her, but she really feels like she is part of this outfit and I don't know how she does it. I love the way her brain works. I love this outfit and it is definitely going to be a bam. Next up, we have Edna Noir. She's coming out with this sort of a blue jacket with these a pointy shoulders, this a white a skirt with a spinning breast. She's paired it with a black hair and a white chin. I don't know what is happening here. She said that she is going for a sort of a retro future vibe, which I find very interesting because that is also what like Le Philippe did. So I'm really curious what was the prompt on the getting ready list. So for those of you who do not know, the queens are told that they need to bring certain looks for the runway and they kind of give them a short description of what that needs to be. They do not tell them the exact theme. That's why you have a few people going in a few different directions because they are reading a sentence and interpret it in their own ways. So clearly there must have said something about this retro futurism or something in there because why else would we have two queens going in this direction? But when it comes to Edna, I don't feel that this is as successful as Le Philippe. Now first up, let's talk about this chin paint. She painted her chin white and I'm like, what is it supposed to be? Because it looks like a beard. And I am okay with you having a beard if you are a bearded queen, but why paint on a beard? I mean, if you were going for a Santa Claus look or something like that, I can understand painting on a beard, but this has nothing to do with it. So I, I'm assuming that it was supposed to be some sort of chin strap or some sort of mechanics, but it is definitely not reading. Whatever that was supposed to be, whether it be a chin strap, whether it be metal, should have probably been made and then just glued onto her face as opposed to painted because it is not reading. Then we get into the mechanisms of this dress and it kind of feels like meh. Spinning boobs, cool, love it. Smoke coming out of her hips, okay, cool. But it doesn't feel that integrated. It kind of just feels like things plopped on and I feel like that's my whole vibe with this entire look. I don't get it. It all feels a little jimble jamble all over the place. All in all, definitely not my favorite and it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out in this steampunk-inspired look. She's coming out with the copper, with the gears all around it, and the classic top hat. As she walks, you can see that it starts to smoke a little bit, giving you that mechanical vibe. This is yet another queen that went in this sort of retro-future vibes, but she went in more of a steampunk direction. Now, 
If I had originally saw this look last year, I would have said it is super cool. But the last season of Canada's Drag Race uh, did a steampunk runway and that was so, so successful. So seeing this in comparison does feel a little bit basic. Now, is it basic? No, it's not. It actually looks really good. It's got all the pieces. You understood the message. You understood the mechanism. You understood what it is supposed to be. I do wish that there was a little bit more movement to it. For example, I wish that the gears moved a, a little bit because I think that would have really helped with uh, the mechanics part of it. And I do wish that some of the pieces were a little bit bigger and maybe even more distressed a little bit to kind of give you that steampunk vibe. Everything looks really clean, but it's Leona Winter. Everything is super clean. She is like perfection. And that's the thing. How can I really criticize perfection except by giving her a bow? And finally, we have Norma Bell. And Norma Bell is coming out with this uh, black dress with this uh, black hair. Her hair is very Frankenstein-esque, but this time with the little orange on the side instead of the white. She says that her dress is inspired by a volcano because in La Réunion, they have volcanoes. But when it comes to the mechanism, it fails. Aww. There is no mechanism. And I am so disappointed for her because clearly it was supposed to be some sort of liquid. And I say that because there is actually a drape on the floor. So clearly they needed to clean that up fast. I think that this had a lot of potential. The whole idea of a volcano is a really cool one because the black and the orange are really contrasting and can really make a moment. I also get flashbacks to UK vs. The World 2 with Marina Summers, who also did a volcano, but it didn't have any liquid or anything coming out of it. So this was really set up for success. But because the mechanism didn't work, you're left just judging a dress. And the dress itself is okay. It is nothing special. It really depended on the mechanism to make it be that extra va 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 boom. And that is a lesson that we are going to learn today is that your outfit needs to stand on its own with or without the mechanism. I think had she done this and then like rhinestoned every piece to it so it looked more like crystallized, I think she could have gone away with just the dress itself without the mechanism. Since it didn't have any of that, it looked quite basic. Since it looked quite basic and it, the mechanism didn't work, it's unfortunately going to have to be a drab. <laughs> And that is it for this week's runway. Girl, can I just say how excited I am about Drag Race France? We are on episode two and they are turning it up. Every week I'm more excited to be filming this episode about France than I am for All Stars 9 and that is saying something. We had some amazing looks this week. So let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week for the season two queen goes to... Fiona, oh. and for the season three runway, my drab of the week goes to Andina oh. Noir. First up, I will say that Kiona's look was the worst of the entire night. And this is so surprising because not only is she a season two contestant, that means that, that they had a year of gigs and bookings, but she is the winner of the season and she came back with the worst look. She was even worse than every single one of the season three contestants and that's saying a lot. When it came to Edna Noir, she just wasn't at the level of everybody else and I just didn't get her concept. So, sorry babes. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week for the season two queen goes to Moon and for the season three queen, it goes to Magnetica. That is right, I love both of these because they were both super original, super complex, super detailed, but and each giving their own individual personalities, but really bringing drag to a different level. They are not doing pretty for the sake of pretty. They are doing avant-garde. They are doing club kids. They are doing them, and that's the drag I love. Woo! And that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions, my fabs and drive of the weeks? Then let me know in the comments down below. I do read all of them and I try to reply to most of them. Tell me who you had as your fabs and drabs of the week. Every comment does help this video get more views and I really am trying to get more views and I want to get more views so that I can continue the whole season. And while you're there, can you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button? If you haven't already, I am dropping new episodes every week 
week. I am doing uh, All Stars 9. I am doing a Drag Race France. I have a few other ideas in mind, and I might even be doing a Drag Race Mexico coming soon. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.